Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The subject that we want to touch on today is the matter, and it might sound uh, strange when you first hear it, but is your personal dialect in your relationship with God. Mm. Um, because in our work, we find more and more the importance of people discovering their personal dialect, their language, the language that they uh, relate to God, but also how God relates to them or communicates to them. Mm. Yes, because I often, um, we often get the feeling, only in our own lives, you have times where you feel that God is not hearing you, God is not talking to you, there's a big silence, uh, so you, you're not aware of, of God being present in your life. But I think the big problem usually is that we do not know our dialect. So God is always busy reaching out, talking to us, but we don't hear it because we don't recognize it. Yeah, and I think there's a number of reasons why we don't recognize it. And the one is, we often think God speaks only in one form and in one language. Yes. Um, there's only one message. It's almost like a blanket, uh, blanket approach. That message covers all the bases. And it, and it works for everybody. And it works uh, for everybody. It should, it sh it, it, yeah, everybody should follow those, that, that, what the message is telling them. That is what everybody should be following. And, and that message is often contained in, in that image in uh, 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 faith. Uh, what is the word? <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a setting where you have somebody that you perceive to be the one that, that actually knows what God wants us to know. And that, yes. that maybe credo. somebody, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or maybe somebody uh, that studied to be a pastor or minister in theology and that, that we feel know the Bible, know what God is saying and that can with um, with authority can tell us what God wants us to know. Yes. Often we feel that's the only way that we can find out what God is saying to us. Yeah. So that is the one reason, um, me not finding the word, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that sense of the message has to be cloaked in authority in, in one sense mm -hmm. or the other. Tied into that is the sense that God can't possibly speak through me, uh, use me as a vessel, or what I have to offer is in any way uh, something that God can use. Yeah, or that God will specifically be talking to me, like really addressing me personally. Yes, that, that is the... The second thing, and the third thing is tying into all what we've said up to now is that God can use very ordinary and plain things to convey his message. Uh, it isn't cloaked in a certain garment or it is really... It comes to us in all forms and sizes. Mm. Um, I actually think there's a fourth one. All right. And it's something that we disregard. And that is how God speaks to us through the things that really touches us. Mm. The things that we really love. Love doing. Love being in. Love um, experiencing. Those those very unique things that that, that makes you feel... Uh, fulfilled, I think that is a very good place to start looking for your dialogue. But uh, that's what I meant in the third. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's actually the same thing, but it's good that you've uh, mm. clarified it a little bit more because those loves can be a love for knitting. Yes, yes. 
or it can be a love for baking or cooking or colors a certain <clears throat> color so a certain yeah. season or yeah. it, it, it doesn't matter it's that deep love and fulfillment that we experience when we're busy with something mm -hmm. um, that is often where we find the dialect mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's a good point to move on to the the next aspect that we want to touch upon and that is how do you find your dialect mm. i think definitely look <clears> at <throat> what makes you come alive what what you really enjoy doing um and 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 be as open be as, as possible open and as every day as you possibly can it might be that for me my one and only cup of coffee in the mornings is such a, a blissful moment of feeling um, cared for, feeling um, held. Mm. Uh, there, sitting in the sun in winter with my small little porcelain cup of coffee. It's a, it's a, it really fulfills me, and it, it's a moment with God. It's a, a moment that God is actually touching me. Mm. Mm. And the other thing is. Um, to get to know your true essence, uh, the things that is really part of your greater self, your God self. We touched upon that when we spoke about the Enneagram. Mm. And I think it's important because if we don't, if we don't know how to listen to ourselves or are not in contact with what we what our inner being is telling us, we, we, we don't even have that dialect, mm. then we cannot possibly know how to listen to God or find God. Yeah. And the beauty is, we love the quote by St. Augustine, and in the same vein, I've read the same thing uh, uh, at uh, Calvin, uh, Calvin mm -hmm. John Calvin. But in the words of uh, St. Augustine, the road to ourselves is the road to God. And what that implies is, it's almost like coming to God and saying, God, I want to be in this deep relationship with you. And God says, I, it really touches me. I'm really glad that that is the case. But I have to tell you, the only way to get to me is through yourself. Mm. There isn't a shortcut. There isn't another route. And it implies that we are extremely important in our uniqueness, in our loves, and in the way God created us mm. in this relationship. It's not... Um, just this, yeah, just this week I've read this quote by James Finley. The big um, trap that spirituality can fall into is to take us away from our ordinary life. Mm. Mm. Um, it is so important and to that dialect is part of our ordinary life and who we are. Mm. And to take ourselves seriously because that's the way God takes us. Uh, seriously so so getting really practical how would we go about to fine-tune ourselves in terms of finding our unique dialect with God what works for you I think what what in the past has been very helpful is having a journal um, so and often for me personally it helps to hear myself when I either write um, in a in a free form writing, whatever comes into my mind, and I'm sometimes surprised at what I see there, or when I'm talking, like we're talking now, I actually hear my thoughts without having uh, constructed them beforehand. So what I feel and what I believe comes out in words, and I can actually hear myself. Mm -hmm. So that definitely, and and what really happens in terms of journaling is that you start noticing synchronicities. Mm -hmm. You start picking up of small little things that 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 continue to happen and that that's like little 
almost like fireflies. You mm. see it here and you see it there, and and you you start to actually look out for them because they become uh, a way that God is reassuring you. I have the sunbird as my personal um, um, symbol from God as as a reassurance of care and abundance, and um, I've had incredible experiences with sunbirds that we write wrote that i wrote about on the blog and we'll put the links on, we'll, the, yeah. on this week's uh, blog post but um i don't have to have an, a special experience with a sunbird now to see a sunbird and to be reminded mm. of of uh, that care and that um provision mm. so yeah. so it really can be I once had an orange year mm. where we got really, and it was a year of tremendous turmoil, but it was also a year of being abundantly alive. Mm. So the color orange has become for me a symbol of abundance. Mm. So I think it's it's that uniqueness um, of it and the becoming very sensitive to mm. that, um, that journaling definitely helps silence the, the med, uh, meditational practices that we do uh, resting in god um, makes me less anxious about things and that also opens me up in terms of my senses in terms of my sensitivity i think mm. Mm. And for you yeah also journaling uh, reading does that for me i love beautiful words uh, and the small everyday things uh, ordinary living is filled with such richness and texture mm. and uh, meaning. Um, so that means a lot to me, like a cat on my lap or the sun coming through a window, mm. a beautiful piece of wood uh, or fixing something or restoring something and how that comes through almost a, a deep passion mm. uh, and uh, a patience mm. with, with something. I think also uh, to maybe just say and be careful of putting a meaning to absolutely everything. Mm. You know, like taking something and say, um, this now is God's way of showing me to eat this piece of cake to mm. use a, uh, a really ridiculous example we can't go and and sort of we have an idea of what we want to do and then find something that we believe god is mm. is saying to us mm. it is much more it comes from a from a deeper place than um so so and and it's like um it's like a little adventure it's almost like Hiding things for children and and, and mm. having them go and look for it. It's 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 not obvious. It but it's also in experience, like you say, like experiencing a moment for what it is, mm. and for the for the preciousness of that moment. Mm. Um, I think if we can become more aware of how precious a moment is, like a cat getting onto your lap, mm. um, she chooses your lap, mm. and she sits there, and it's special. Um, and to just be more aware of that mm. 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 is a fine tuning. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and a good conversation. Mm. Uh, good conversation. That's why we love the conversations with you, and we love the feedback. Mm. Thank you for the feedback. Uh, this sense that you are part of this conversation. In so many ways, uh, we really appreciate that. Um, and I'll give my kingdom for a good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the opportunity of sharing this with you. May I you know, have yeah. a lovely week until we speak again. Yes, have a good week. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.